I'm, uh, I'm William Castin, uh, working at Tenevia. Uh, Tenevia, which is a French research uh, spin-off uh, company. And uh, I'm going to present you our, our experience on the operationalization of uh, image uh, velocimetry techniques. As, uh, as you all know, those techniques can provide uh, valuable information for both offline analysis, but also for real-time uh, monitoring. Uh, some of the possible strategies are outlined here, depending of, uh, of the objective of the imaging device, of the computing uh, architecture. Um, for real-time monitoring with fixed uh, cameras, uh, advances from the video surveillance industry can be also leveraged in order to process the images on board. And in this case, uh, the camera is connected to the data logger and uh, delivers measurements just like, uh, just like uh, other sensors, I would say. Uh, of course, this is not uh, that simple and um, successful operationalization uh, requires uh, different components uh, to be addressed and interconnected uh, appropriately. Um, we found this conceptual diagram from Bell and Osren uh, quite uh, interesting. It, uh, the challenge of balancing uh, technology, process, and people uh, is nicely uh, illustrated. For, for our specific application, uh, the, the building block is, of course, the hardware devices and the computer, computer vision uh, algorithm. But um, operation should not require a very specific and complex skills. Um, for example, all, all hydrometers um, shouldn't need to become computer vision experts in order to use uh, this technology. Otherwise, the diffusion uh, might be, uh, might be quite, uh, quite limited. Lastly, uh, since everything cannot be and uh, should not be uh, automated, uh, operations should be framed by very clear uh, guidelines, workflow, uh, and tools. Some of the drawbacks underlying uh, sub suboptimal situations are outlined here on the, on the diagram, uh, and the optimal combination uh, being the intersection of the, of, the of the three components. Those components are also characterized by specific and interacting uh, sources um, of uncertainty. Uh, for example, the use of a very uh, tedious and fuzzy uh, workflow potentially combined uh, with a method which is uh, very sensitive to parameters which cannot be uh, easily fixed can lead to, to very poor uh, outcome, uh, outcomes for the results. Among the different sources of uncertainty, uh, we propose here to focus on the, on the calibration uncertainty because as it was uh, pre uh, previously mentioned, at some point, all uh, methods uh, require uh, an approach uh, to, uh, to transform, to convert uh, displacement measured in the image plane into uh, real world metric uh, velocities. In addition, uh, for the calculation of discharge, errors in the description of the cross-section profile or in the positioning of this profile with respect to um, the surface uh, velocities uh, can lead to very, uh, can have a great impact uh, on the discharge calculation. Uh, for the calibration, the, det the detection of errors is always is not always that uh, that obvious. Uh, for example, if you see the the two surface velocity field on this uh, on this picture on the left, uh, this is uh, a, a velocity field which is estimated which is a, with a correct calibration, and on the right, a 10% error was generated on the focal length. Uh, so you can see that the results are quite different. This kind of error can be generated either because you are using the wrong calibration method or because you are using an appropriate method but uh, with non-appropriate uh, inputs. And for this specific case, it turns out to generate more than 30% uh, in discharge. Therefore, um, checking and controlling the sources of uncertainty um, really requires an integrated approach, an end-to-end -end, uh, workflow uh, for gathering data on the field, for combining this data in order to have a reliable um, uh, calibration site. The challenge at the, the end of the, the at the end of the of the exercise, the objective is to have all the pieces of information outlined here on this diagram in the same coordinate system. But this is not straightforward for for all site uh, conditions. 
Um, the, the video here shows, for example, for the camera calibration, show how efficiently real world uh, point coordinates uh, can be associated to the position in the image. The visualization of the pictures taken by the survey device, the thumbnails, greatly facilitate the process and uh, reduces the, the, the sources of error. This, uh, with this workflow, you obtain a calibration which is quite accurate and where you can also take uh, the, the, the camera distortion uh, into account. The next um, illustration uh, shows a screen uh, enabling the manipulation and visualization on the other setup points that can be used in order to describe the cross-section, at least the part of the cross-section which was, which was not underwater uh, during the, the field survey. Then um, you can combine uh, the, the underwater uh, geometry, which is often available only uh, with via distance over depth. You can combine this data with the, the rest of the profile and correct the, the eventual sources uh, of error. At the end, uh, the objective then is to uh, verify and check uh, all the pieces of, of information. And after this, uh, one will be much more confident for uh, using this calibration for measuring over uh, uh, an important range of flows. If uh, you are in the case where the camera is not, is not fixed, uh, the workflow also enables uh, matching uh, the, the calibration image that you can see here with the ground reference points with another image uh, taken uh, uh, in a neighboring location using uh, image matching points. You can uh, uh, transpose those, um, those uh, ground reference points to the flood image in order to do uh, measurements. Once the calibration phase uh, is completed, uh, images, image sequences can be processed in order to provide the real flows. I will, um, I will uh, give a few examples in the, in the next slides. The first one is really uh, the straightforward um, application of the workflow I, I just presented. Uh, the objective is to process the video in order to, to obtain uh, flood, uh, flood measurements. The topographic survey uh, carried out at low flows uh, was used in order to be transposed to uh, the, the, the flood video sequence and provide uh, surface velocity measurements only using uh, a video which was gathered for, for a few minutes presence on the bridge. On some sites, uh, camera, fixed camera is, are providing um, much more extensive information because in this case, the period of interest is not, uh, is not missed. You have an example here in Southern France in, in Ardèche, where on this specific site, um, the measurements carried out using a single flood cover the, uh, the entire range that was, that was gouged for the latest uh, 25 years. The peak discharge here corresponds to a 10 years, uh, to a 10 years flood. So in this case, uh, the, 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 you have very scarce measurements measurements in the, for high discharge and then the analysis confirmed uh, the, the rating curve. In other cases, just like here on the same uh, river basin but upstream, it is much, much more challenging to gauge floods uh, because the, the flows are much more violent. And then uh, here in this case, after the latest, um, the latest uh, red dot on this graph, it is simply not possible to gauge with traditional techniques. And then here the camera uh, really enabled an extension of the of the of the gauging range for the hydrometric services. The stage discharge relationship on rivers, as you know, is not uh, uh, is not uh, always that simple. It can be more more complex. You have here an example of a site where the river flow is affected by uh, variable backwater uh, effects. Uh, so, as you can see on the graph on the right, below a certain water level. Uh, the discharge also depends not only on the water level at the section, but also at the water level uh, in the, in the, on, on hydropower plant, which is sit situated several kilometers downstream. So we carried out also um, measurements with using a fixed camera on this site. What, what you can see on the left is the, is the time series uh, over a year, time series of uh, water level, uh, velocity, and discharge. The graph on the, on the right shows the relation between the, the water level and the surface velocity. 
and shows also uh, this, uh, this dispersion at, uh, for lower water level due to the back to water effect I, I mentioned uh, just before. Of course, having continuous discharge measurement can be convenient uh, forever. However, sorry, uh, one has to keep in mind that it is necessary in, on some sites to do uh, regular updates of the river bathymetry. Uh, the, the plot here corresponds to um, uh, measurements carried out during a flood and the, um, the coloring of the points depends on the measurements which, which were made before and after the flood peak. So you can clearly see, clearly see here that there was, there was a, a, a rating, there's a shift uh, during, this, uh, during this flood due to the morpho morphological changes, the erosion and sediment transport. If you take uh, two surface velocity fields at similar water level before and after the flood, you can clearly see uh, the shift of the, of the stream rise uh, uh, transverse velocity profile. The next example I will uh, highlight here um, is, is a flow, uh, is, a, is a flood on a, on a composite section and which is also characterized by uh, an important wake uh, from the bridge, uh, from the bridge prior here. So you can see uh, on this video that image video symmetry enables uh, measurement over the entire uh, over the entire section, and you, you can see on the on the right figure the evolution of the stream rise uh, profile with variations of the of the water level. Uh, when you plot uh, discharge over water levels, it is also very interesting that uh, we were able to identify clearly an iter an hysteresis effect. Uh, which, uh, which is quite consistent to the, to the, to the observed uh, hydraulic behavior. In order to finish, I will just say a few words about uh, measurements during the night. Uh, measurements can be carried out uh, over small river sections with uh, infrared illumination. Uh, but on most, on most sites, uh, measurements will be reliable on only uh, during floods. Uh, on this site here, a rating shift was uh, identified uh, even during the, this, uh, this night period. This, is, this, this site is near Nice. This is a small stream. In some other cases, when appropriate lighting is available and distributed over the section, uh, measurement can be made of a much larger uh, river section uh, and then provide uh, really continuous time series where you can see here the evolution of the water level, the discharge, and then stage versus discharge providing a, a very uh, clear uh, pattern of the of the rating curve only with using a, a single flood so as a few um, general conclusions uh, to finish the, op the operationalization of those techniques is really an added value for hydrometric services but also for all uh, stakeholders uh, needing uh, uh, discharge information there are many, many other challenges to be, uh, to be addressed. Most of them will be discussed uh, during the, uh, this, uh, the exciting dis discussion of this workshop. But uh, the knowledge and resources available in order to address them are continuously increasing. Uh, therefore, there are a lot of good reasons to be uh, excited and op optimistic. Thank you very much for your attention and looking forward to, to have some questions. Okay, thank you very much, William, for, for a really nice presentation. It's, it's really great to see the data and the visualizations, which look, which look great. Um, I, I probably should have sort of coughed or spluttered and told you time was running out. One really quick question, if anybody's got one. Okay, in which case I'll ask a very quick question. What, one of the pictures showed um, a very turbulent flow coming out from some quite small bridge arches. And I was interested on the placement of the camera. Would, it, would you have got better results if you'd had it on the upstream side of the bridge? Because it appears you're going to have a very unpredictable flow pattern coming out from the bridge. You, it, is it the site you are mentioning? Yes. No, I sooner, earlier in the presentation than this one. Oh. I think it was a still image. And the water seemed to be higher than the, than the soffit level of the bridge and really... This one? Yes, that one there. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's true that uh, in in, uh, in flood flood areas, people tend to uh, to put uh, stop gauges and instruments uh, 
uh, downstream because they are protected uh, from uh, from floods. <laughs> and uh, the difficulty is that uh, in order to get reliable uh, surface velocity fields, uh, it would have been uh, better on many sites to to uh, to measure the water level and surface velocities uh, uh, upstream. But in this case, what we obtain is that if you uh, if you measure if you take uh, measurements uh, far away from the bridge, you can still have uh, very reliable um, uh, surface velocity and discharge measurements. 